Okay, so welcome back. Um, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about a couple of things. First of all, let's talk about what makes the horror of Babylon the horror of Babylon. We're going to talk in great detail in Revelation 18, but I want to give you a little bit of a kind of a feed forward. So there are two nations of the earth currently, as of 2022, that have a lot of trading power. Uh, the United States and China are the two largest countries, the largest GDPs, imports, exports. When you look at them, their global trade, the U.S. and China are the largest. So the U.S. as of 2022, the United States was at $25.3 trillion and China was at 19.9. But China is rapidly increasing, right? But the whore of Babylon we know, and we're going to read here in just a minute, is a global trader. So we know it's probably going to be from one of those two countries. It's going to be either from the United States or China because we're going to see in just a minute that, they're, that the kings of the earth are made rich because of this whore. Uh, so we'll talk about cities in a minute, but I wanted to at least give you the chance to see the... the and for those of you online, you should be able to see the... Uh, visualization that I've got on the screen. I've handed some here and I'll have to tip this in on the video uh, when I get ready to edit it maybe. Um, you can go to uh, visualcapitalist.com and they've got all sorts of great stuff out there if you're looking for this kind of material. Somebody thinks about this stuff and they do it just for fun but it's visualcapitalist.com so I'm giving a plug to them. I'm not going to guarantee you that it's a Christian site. I'm not saying that by any means, but it's good for resources. Okay, so let's run into Revelation. Uh, let's run into Revelation 18. And let's see here. Okay, here we go. The fall of Babylon. Oh, I was going to tell you that scripture verse. It was it was right in front of my eyes all along. I was looking for it. And I couldn't find it. Uh, and somebody online is probably watching, telling me, buck, 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 and telling me where it's at, but I couldn't hear them because I can't hear from YouTube. Revelation 16, 19 says, The great city was divided into three parts. The great city is Jerusalem. The great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give to her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were, were not found. So Babylon's judgment happens toward the end time of the end, toward the end of the, the, uh, the last vial, right? The seventh vial, this is the seventh vial, this is the last vial that's poured out. Um, okay, so let's see here. Let's go to verse 18, or chapter 18, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants, here's a new population, we haven't talked about merchants yet, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Now, first of all, that word merchants doesn't mean, uh, you know, Sam down the street that has a coffee shop. That's not what it means. When it's talking about merchants here, it's talking about people that are global traders. Global traders. It's talking about people who buy and sell on global, national yeah, scale. Like they're buying for the United States. They're buying for France. They're buying for global regions even, right? These, that word, the Greek word here is representing not just somebody that has a store, but somebody that's dealing with mass sales of goods. I heard another voice from heaven saying what? What does that say? Verse four, someone read that for me. Anybody? 
Revelation 18, 4. Online, Mary, you got it? And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Go out from her, my people, that you may not be partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Yeah. So here is a voice from heaven saying what? Come out of her, my people. So during this time, toward the end of the plagues, believers are still on the face of the earth, and they still exist at the point that Babylon the Great will fall. And God is warning believers, followers of his, to get out of the city. Come out of her, my people, that you will not be partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. There's one prophecy that says, I will call them my people who are not my people. It's talking about the Gentiles. So I think it's interesting that here he says, come out of her, my people. And specifically, that prophecy says, I will call them my people who are not my people. In other words, I'm giving them a name. They're my people. That is the name I'm giving them. They are my people, and I'm calling them by that name. I will call them my people who are not my people. Talking about the Gentiles, the non-Jewish, non-Jewish believers. And here in this scripture, we see God say, we see the scripture record that there was a voice from heaven. We don't know if it was God. We just know it's a voice. I heard a voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. So I think this is specifically talking to Gentile individuals, going back to that prophecy, I will call them my people who are not my people. And here we see, come out of her, my people. Does it mean that the Lord would want the Jews to stay behind? No, I don't think that's the case. But I think the intent here, I think what the scripture is pointing to is that this is talking to a city that's primarily not Jewish. It's a Gentile city. Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Reward her, even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she has filled, fill to her double. So in other words, this, this, uh, this voice from heaven is saying, God, pay Babylon back twice as much as she's destroyed the earth. Give it back to her twice as much. Verse 7, how much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. In other words, as well as she's lived, give her torment and sorrow to that same level. For she says in her heart, I sit a queen. I am no widow and I see no sorrow. I am untouchable. There is nothing that anyone can do to me. That's my words. Therefore, her plague will come in one day. Her plague will come in one day. Death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord who judges her. Utterly burned. Not just burned, not just kind of burned, but utterly burned. There's not going to be any place left in this city that's not burned. The kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall, shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. So here we have a hint. Verse 9, The kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her will bewail her and lament for her when they will see the smoke of her burning. So we know that she's going to burn with fire. We know that there's going to be continued smoke after the fire has begun. They're going to see the smoke. They're going to bewail it. Standing afar off for fear... So they're distance. They're like, I'm not getting close to that. I'm afraid. I am fearful to get close to that. Now, think about this. 
Where would we be today if firefighters were afraid of fire? That didn't make any sense. You got someone that's you get somebody that's a firefighter, what are they gonna do? They're gonna put their gear on, they're gonna load up, they're gonna put a respirator on, they're gonna go into the house, by golly, they're gonna make sure that Fifi's out safe and alive. The little cat doesn't get burned up. 